He's got a big leg. We'll see what can happen here. He's kicking from the San Francisco side of midfield. Drills it. And it's off the crossbar and through. 63 yards from David Akers. And he gets lifted up. The field goal by A.J. Bowles, Joey Hushik, and Kevin McNamara. For our theoretical Thursday project, we'll be taking a look at the minimum initial velocity needed to make a field goal from two separate distances. Under NCAA regulations, field goal posts are 10 feet high and 18.5 feet wide. A football measures 11 inches from end to end, so the change in height necessary to make a field goal is 10 feet and 11 inches. For our project, we rounded that value up to 11 feet. We will be testing the minimum initial velocity needed to make a field goal from two separate distances. The first distance will be from the 8-yard line, essentially an extra point. The second distance will be from the 38-yard line, a 48-yard field goal. We assumed a 45 degree launch angle. We went to a local park to study projectile motion, the focus of our project. I'm AJ Bowles and this is the field goal. Physics, hooray! What is the minimum initial velocity needed to make a field goal from 18 yards away? Let's look at what we know. AJ kicked the ball from 18 yards away, which added to the 10 yards of the end zone, gives a delta x of 28 yards. The change in y is 11 feet, which is the height of the goalpost. We know that the change in x is 28 yards, which we can use a conversion factor to find the uh, distance in feet. That is 84 feet. We know that the delta y is 11 feet and we do not know the time and we do not know the initial velocity. We also know that the angle at which AJ kicked the ball at was 45 degrees. We can use the equation delta x equals initial velocity times cosine times time to find the initial velocity. Initial velocity is equal to 84 divided by cosine of 45 times time. We will use this later in our other equation to figure for the initial velocity. We then use delta y equals initial velocity times sine of theta times time minus one half of the acceleration of gravity times time squared. Plugging in the numbers we see that 11 is equal to 84 divided by cosine 45 times time times sine of 45 times time minus one half of 32 times time squared. We then isolate time to find that time is equal to the square root of 75 divided by 16, which is equal to 2.136 seconds. We then use this equation from before to find the initial velocity, which is equal to 84 divided by cosine of 45 times 2.136 seconds. That is equal to 55.6 feet per second. Next, we tested a field goal from the 38-yard line. And boom goes the dynamite. Attempting a field goal from 38 yards away, AJ hit the crossbar. Let's see if we can find his initial velocity. First, let's see what we know. He kicked it from 38 yards away. When adding in the additional 10 yards of the end zone, we get a total of 48 yards. Using a conversion factor of 3 feet equals 1 yard, we get a total of 144 feet. This is the change in the x direction. By measuring the height of the goalpost, we found the change in the y direction to be 11 feet. The angle AJ kicked it at is 45 degrees. The change in time we do not know. We also do not know the initial velocity, but let's see if we can figure it out. First, we're going to use the equation change in x equals initial velocity times cosine of the angle times time. Plugging in the numbers, we get 144 feet, 
equals initial velocity times cosine of 45 times time. Solving for the initial velocity, we get 144 over cosine of 45 times time. Using this value for the initial velocity, we can plug it into the next equation to figure out the time. The next equation we use is change in y equals initial velocity times sine of theta times time minus one-half gravity times time squared. Plugging in the numbers, we get 11 equals the initial velocity we found earlier, or 144 over cosine of 45 times time, times sine of 45 times time, minus one-half 32t squared. Notice we use 32 in this case because we're working with feet over second squared instead of meters over second squared. Solving for t, we get 2.88 seconds. We can then plug this into our above equation to find the initial velocity. Plugging in those numbers, we get an initial velocity of 70.6 feet per second. Thanks to physics, we are able to calculate the minimum initial velocity needed to make a field goal from 18 yards and the initial velocity needed to hit the crossbar from 48 yards, both at a 45 degree angle. Thanks, Physics, and thank you, David Akers.